Hi, I'm Eleanor Keller. I'm the patient experience manager for OSS Health. And while you are a patient in the hospital, I will be visiting you uh, to see how your care is. I want to talk a little bit about your joint replacement surgery process. The objectives of this are that before, during, and after surgery to cover your hospital stay, your pain management, and also preventing complications. You may take certain medications with a sip of water as instructed by your doctor the morning of surgery. Please do not apply any lotions, scented products, hair products, powder, lipstick, chapstick, or nail polish that morning. You may take a shower with either the bacterial soap you have or a regular shower, and please brush your teeth. Teeth are a source of infection, and we want to make sure that you don't have an infection after surgery. When you arrive at the facility, you are going to need someone to drive you, and you can park in the handicapped spots. You want to enter the main entrance of the hospital, and for OSS Hospital, you want to stop at the reception desk immediately to your left upon entrance. If you're having your surgery at Memorial Hospital, please proceed to the second floor. And at York Hospital, you want to go to the short stay unit, so you want to take the south elevators to the second floor. This is actually a picture of the OSS Hospital reception desk, and as you come in the hospital, it's immediately to the left. Someone will greet you there. When you check in for pre-op, you're going to be asked your name and date of birth, and you'll be asked this multiple times while you are a patient in the hospital. It's our way of just ensuring that we don't have a mistake. Hospital staff is going to check you in and have you sign a lot more paperwork. One of these is a patient safety contract because you, we want you to partner with us for your safety, ensuring that you do not get out of bed without help with one of the hospital staff, and making sure that if you do have medications from home that we've asked to bring you in, you do not take these unless a nurse gives them to you. You're going to be sent back to the pre-op area, and there you're going to change into a hospital gown. A nurse is then going to start an IV, which is how you will get medication prior to surgery and during your surgery. You're going to be asked some additional questions by that nurse, by the anesthesiologist, and or your surgeon. Multiple times, you're going to be asked your name, your date of birth, who your surgeon is, what surgical procedure you're having done, and what side. The surgeon is then going to initial your leg to indicate that we have the correct surgical site. Anesthesia is going to discuss options with you as far as anesthesia. One is general, where you're put completely to sleep. One is the spinal, where you're given medication so that you don't know what's going on, but you're numb from the waist down. We also many times do peripheral nerve blocks for joint replacements. This will be done in the pre-op area. You'll be given some medication to relax you, and then they will be able to block the nerves, and this will get you up to 12 to 24 hours of pain relief after surgery. The nerve blocks may be done before surgery, and during your surgery, anesthesia will be administered. For surgery, you'll be taken into the operating room, and you're going to be on a stretcher in the pre-op area. You're going to go into the operating room on that stretcher. Again, they're going to check your ID. They're going to ask you your name, your date of birth, who your surgeon is, what surgery you're having done, and what side. And they're going to introduce you to everyone who's going to be in the operating room with you. And there's a lot of people there, so you'll see a lot of people in there. You're going to be positioned on the operating room table, and anesthesia will begin with the induction of anesthesia, which means they'll start giving you some medication through your IV and giving you an oxygen mask to start breathing into. After that, you're not going to remember very much. Your actual surgery time is anywhere from one to three hours. During surgery, your family can wait in the family OR waiting room, and for the OSS hospital, that is our lobby. The PACU, or the post-anesthesia care unit, is where you'll be transferred to after surgery. There's going to be a different set of nurses there that are going to assess and treat your pain and care for you as you recover from anesthesia. Your family can expect you to be in the PACU or the recovery room for one to three hours. But after you're stable, you're going to be transferred to your nursing floor where your family will be able to see you. This is actually a picture of the PACU, or post-anesthesia care unit, at OSS Hospital. The bed there, you'll be transferred directly from the operating room table onto a bed. That way, you won't have any pain while you're moving. After surgery, you're going to have oxygen, either a mask or in your nose. You will have an IV that you're going to get fluids and also some medications through. You're going to have sequential compression devices, which are pumps on your calves or up onto your thighs and calves that will compress and relax to prevent blood clots. And sometimes you may have TED hose. These are the white stockings that will either go to your knee or up to your thigh. You're going to have a lot of surgical bandages, especially on knees. You're going to have an ACE wrap and a very bulky bandage. 
you're going to have a little probe on your finger, which is a pulse oximetry, and that's going to measure the oxygen level in your blood and tell us if you need to have oxygen continued or not. And you're going to have lots of blankets to keep you warm because the operating room and the recovery room are very cold. Hi, my name is Megan McNelly. I'm Director of Pharmacy at OSS Health. Today, I'll be talking to you about pain after your surgery, as well as medications that you may be using at home to help control blood clots. After surgery, it's important to remember that you will have pain. Unfortunately, most patients having a total hip or knee replacement are experiencing some degree of pain prior to surgery. The end goal of surgery is to both increase your function and decrease your pain overall. However, that will take time. While you will have pain in-house, it's our goal to make it as tolerable as possible. Our staff will repeatedly ask you to rate your pain on a pain scale from zero to 10. Zero is no pain at all, and 10 is the worst imaginable pain. Most patients find that a pain level of between three and five is acceptable to them. You may be a bit uncomfortable, but pain overall will be tolerable. We use multiple strategies at OSS to help relieve your pain and make you as comfortable as possible. We want you to participate in your care plan as well as your physical therapy activities. We want you to be as comfortable as possible. For this reason, we ask that you keep us informed of your pain level and also let us know what pain relieving techniques or medications are working best for your pain relief. I want to talk to you a little bit about your days after surgery. The first day after surgery, um, you will be woke up in one of the rooms. This is actually one of the OSS orthopedic hospital rooms here at the hospital. You'll see a big green chair in the corner, just so you know. We do not have any visiting hours. Your family can come and go as they please. Also, that is a twin bed, so someone can stay with you if they would like to after surgery. The first day after surgery, your diet's gonna be advanced as tolerated. What we're gonna tell you for your first meal is try some liquids, some broth, juice, tea, chicken noodle soup, then you can go for it. And the food at OSS Hospital is fantastic. We have crab cakes, we have shrimp scampi, we have omelets made to order. A therapist is going to work with you and going to encourage you to walk. A social worker or case manager is going to talk to you about discharge planning options, and you're gonna to need to keep working to control your pain. The nurses and the patient care techs will be getting you out of bed, and that's all part of your therapy. We work together as a team. Your blood is going to be drawn for labs, and unfortunately, this is your wake-up call at 5.30 in the morning. Your doctor comes in very early, and they want those labs when they come in. So to ensure we have them ready, we do draw them early. You're going to be encouraged to take deep breaths and cough frequently, and prevent any fluid from accumulating in your lungs and to get all the gases out after surgery. The second day after surgery and onward, therapy is going to continue until you're discharged, at least twice a day. Nursing assistants and the nurses are going to begin the day by getting you up, out of bed, getting you bathed, and getting you ready to start your therapy. They will be working with therapy to move you around and to get you walking, to get your new joint moving. For therapy, the therapists are going to evaluate you, and then they're going to develop a treatment plan. And this plan is going to keep you safe. It's going to go over your activities of daily living, such as bathing and toileting. It's going to instruct you on transfers in and out of a chair, in and out of bed, walking, and use of any adaptive equipment such as walkers, reachers, or sock aids. For your continuing clinical care, your lab work will be drawn and monitored again around 5.30 in the morning to ensure your surgeon receives the reports when they make their rounds. Pain management is going to continue. Bedside anticoagulant teaching will be started by nursing. And if you're staying at OSS Hospital, a pharmacist will be in to visit you to discuss your medications. This not only includes your pain medication and your blood thinners, but also any other medications you're on. So if you have any questions, this is a great time to ask the pharmacist about your medicines. As far as preventing complications, we want to look at constipation. You're not as mobile, you're not eating as much, and you haven't drank for a while. You're also on pain medications, so you may become constipated. We're going to be giving you daily stool softeners and laxatives as needed. We also want you to include, increase your fluid intake and also walk more frequently. As far as nausea, we can advance your diet as tolerated, and we do have anti-nausea medications that can be used either in your IV or orally to help prevent nausea. You will have some swelling, and we will be using ice packs for cold therapy. 
We can also elevate your operative leg on your foot from off the bed. As far as pneumonia, we're going to be using an incentospirometer, which is a little machine for you to take some deep breaths with. We're going to instruct you to do this about 10 times every hour while you're awake. Also, can encourage deep breathing, coughing, and moving around frequently for early mobilization. As far as infection, we want you to keep your surgical site clean and when you go home to keep it covered with a bandage and please keep your pets away from your incision. And IV antibiotics will be given for up to 24 hours after surgery and we want you to encourage your family and all the caretakers to wash their hands. Hand washing is the best way to prevent any type of infection. Please don't be afraid to ask people to wash their hands. As far as blood clots, we use blood thinners such as Lovenox, Coumadin, Aspirin, and Zoalto. We also use TED stockings, which are the white stockings that go from your ankle to your knee or up to your thigh. We use the sequential compression devices either on your calf or thigh, which are little machines to kind of pump up and relax, and also early walking. Most patients will go home on a blood thinner, and there are multiple options, and insurance sometimes limits treatment options. Your treatment plan will be individualized for you. Lovenox, or anoxaparin, is an injection administered to help prevent blood clots. If you are prescribed this medication, staff will show you how to self-administer this medication prior to discharge. Typically, this is given once or twice daily into the fat pad of the abdomen. Bruising may occur at the injection site, but will dissipate over time. Coumadin, or warfarin, is an oral anticoagulant. The doctor will monitor your levels of this medication by checking for a blood level one to two times per week. It is very important that you use the same dose as prescribed by the doctor at the same time of day. Do not double dose if you forget to take a dose. This means don't take two tablets to try and take the one that you forgot. Please monitor your food intake that has foods that contain vitamin K. Foods high in vitamin K can decrease the effectiveness of Coumadin. Foods that contain vitamin K include green, leafy vegetables. You do not have to avoid these foods altogether, but it is important that you consume roughly the same amount each day. Xarelto, or Rivaroxaban, is another oral anticoagulation medication. As with Coumadin, it is important to follow instructions. If you forget to take yesterday's dose, do not take it with today's dose as a catch-up. Be sure to avoid grapefruit and grapefruit juice with this medication. Also, please tell your doctor if you are allergic to milk or have undergone recent gastric bypass surgery, as this may make you a non-candidate for this medication. Aspirin is another oral blood thinner that may be prescribed at discharge. As with all anticoagulants, please be sure to follow instructions regarding dose and how often to take this medication. Bleeding is the primary concern with anticoagulation therapy. Please inform your doctor if you have any signs of the following symptoms. Bleeding from the gums while brushing your teeth. If you notice that your stool is black or tarry. Also, please inform your physician if you have pink or brown urine. Tell your doctor if you notice any other unusual bleeding, such as nosebleed or bruises that won't heal. It is also important to remember to avoid shaving with a blade razor while on anticoagulation medications. If you need to shave, please use an electric razor if possible. Please note that your menses may be a bit heavier than normal while on anticoagulation medication. As far as precautions after going home, we want you to inform all of your health care providers of your surgery. You will need to take an antibiotic before any dental work or any other invasive procedures, such as a colonoscopy or an EGD. This is to prevent infection. We need you to notify your dentist and all of your other health care providers that you have had a total hip or knee replacement. You're going to be given an ID card that's going to list the procedures and also what type of procedures you will need the antibiotic for. Call your surgeon when you need a prescription for the antibiotic or your healthcare provider, such as your PCP, or your dentist may be able to order an antibiotic for you. After discharge, when you go home, we want you to call your doctor if you have increased pain that your medication is not taken care of, or you have swelling. If you have tenderness in your calf or thigh of the leg that you had surgery on, or continuous or daily fever of 101 or higher, 
you will need to either come into urgent care or be seen by your surgeon. If you develop chest pain or shortness of breath, you need to call 911 immediately and be seen in the local emergency room. Main points to remember, many people are going to be participating in your care while you're in the hospital. You will need to continue to manage your pain even at home. You can have complications after surgery, but you can do many things to prevent them. Most patients will take some sort of blood thinner. You will need to understand your medication and bleeding precautions. Many blood thinning medications may be pre-certified by insurance. This needs to be done before surgery. Many times your prescription will be written before surgery. Blood thinners can be expensive and the plan before surgery can change, so you do not pick up your blood thinners until after surgery. If you have any questions about any of the information, please call the patient experience manager at 717-718-2031 or your surgeon's office at 717-848-4800.